Blog Talk Radio.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, that was a rather long song, but it's well worth the listen because wait till I introduce you to my guest tonight who created that wonderful song. This is Off the Chain. I am your host, Yvonne Mason. That was Hall of Mirrors by the band Cypher. And they have been on before. They are on again tonight. So real quick, I just want to tell you guys that thanks to all of y'all, we're at 61,395 listeners just on this show. We are on the downside of 80,000 listeners internationally. So because of all y'all and because of people like my guests, like my band Cypher, we're growing by leaps and bounds, and, and I couldn't be prouder And because it's all about y'all. It's all about the listeners, and it's all about my guests, and I am so honored and so proud and with that in mind, like I said earlier, my guest tonight is the band Cypher. And they if you haven't listened to this show before, they've been on a couple of times. And every time they get a new album, they call me up and they say, hey, Yvonne, find us a slot. We want to come back on. we got a new release. So being who they are and being because they're one of my favorite bands, and I absolutely adore them, and they understand my wicked sense of humor, I always find a spot for them. <laughs> Because these guys are magnificent. They're an industrial electro artist from London, Ontario. And they consist of Lewis Cipher, who does vocals and electronics, and Jason Norwood, who does the synthesizers, percussion, and also the vocals. Cipher was formed in 2015 out of a desire to explore varied musical influences. The experimentation of early industrial bands like Cabaret Voltaire and Skinny Puppy, combined with a more modern electronic sound, define the unique vision and sound of Cypher. And let me tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, these young men are magnificent. Prior to Cypher, Lewis was a well-known industrial DJ in North America. Norwood, he set aside, aside from running his um, own label, Hope Mansion Recordings, he'd been recording various forms of electronic and alternative music for about 25 years. The pair originally met around the turn of the century. No, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not talking about the 19th century. I'm talking about the 20th century, which was 17 years ago, while Lewis was a DJ in London. Cypher's first album, Overthought, was recorded as a concept record with a heavy anti-suicide message and released in early fall of 2015. And if you have not heard that album, you should. That was the very first one we talked about, and the messages on that album are better than any advertising that you can put on a billboard. 2016 saw the band release their follow-up, Subversion, while on tour in eastern Canada. The second album blends the experimental sound of Overthought while adding a more danceable touch. Both albums were released through Hope Mansion Recordings. Now, what these wonderful men have done is they have released yet a third album. And Hall of Mirrors is on that album. So without further ado, because I want to talk about Hall of Mirrors, welcome guys, welcome Jason, welcome Michael. I am so glad y'all are back with me again. It's always good to talk to you, Yvonne. Well, we do we do all sorts of radio shows, Yvonne, and and we love doing like we did a show with uh, Pace last night, and and it was an amazing show, and it, it's more geared towards cannabis, and we do music radio shows, and all these, and and every time we come on your show, it's just it's so cool because it's a show that that you know it's about everything, and that makes us happy, and people talking, and that's just fucking awesome. So. And and that is true because we don't just talk about your music. We talk about the message that you wanted to get across in that anti-suicide album. And like I said before, the you know at the beginning of the show, that resonates better than any billboard that anyone could pay to put up, or any hotline, or anything like that, because it speaks to the heart of the matter. We've had uh, we've had some really cool experiences off that record. Um, I did uh, because of that record. I was invited to speak about my personal um, experiences with suicide, and that day is one I will never forget. I had a guy walk over to me, and, and he had arms the size of my head, covered in tattoos, and he just picked me up in the biggest bear hug and said thanks. And to have someone do that 
Um, and to be able to share that with someone like Jay, right? Because even though that particular day Jay had something to do, we couldn't do music, he's still always there because without Jay, there is no cipher, right? So exactly. to be able to share that with someone who I've been friends with for so many years, it, it just, it, it gives you a reason to keep going. So well, and, that and, the fact, fact, and, and the fact that when you put that album together, you yourself were struggling and it comes through in that music and, and people that are struggling can listen to it and say, Oh, he gets me. I've had some really weird, um, more so with the new album, which we'll talk about a little later, but uh, with that record, I've had some really cool experiences. Um, one that I think I've shared with you before, and Jay, I think you rem- you'll remember this one. Um, we played a, a show in a city called St. Stephen in New Brunswick, um, and it was our first show on that tour when we released Subversion. And we were playing on a <clears throat> on a messed up set list that had a lot of uncomfortable moments in it. And at the end of the show, we went outside, and there was this, this lady crying. And she just ran over and hugged us both and said, thank you. Wow. And uh, to have someone rethink their life and to, to make that kind of an emotional connection with people from a stage, even though what we're doing now is important, there are times that I think back to that tour and, and promoting that record and wish we could go back. I mean, we've talked extensively about revisiting the man in the room and revisiting that storyline because we never did really decide what happened. Exactly. And And ladies uh, and gentlemen, if, if you did not listen to the first show, the man in the room was on that first album. And, and the night, the first time I interviewed these guys, we talked about the man in the room and, and Jay and Michael and I, after I played the song, I gave them my take on it, and it was exactly what the take was, and that is, who is the man in the room? Is the man in the room our inner self struggling with ourselves? Is it an outside force that's trying to keep us grounded? And it's like Michael said, who is the man in the room? We don't know yet. He he appears kind of... And you know, Jay, correct me if I'm wrong here, but I think he appears peripherally on every record in his own way. Um, with the the first half of Over Overthought starts off with that character being angry uh-huh. at a lot of what he's seeing in his environment, and it kind of it descends into a much more abstract. Uh, th- part after about halfway through the album he just starts going right into that loop and uh i think that uh you know it, it that particular album has a very anti-suicide message but there's also that element of i'm watching everything go to hell around me and i'm i can't de- i can't stand it anymore where it starts off. So you can almost plug that into where we evolved more into a political arena. That but, part of the album kind of ties into it. I think it's, um, I think it's important today because uh, I read a, I, I actually burst into tears the other day. I was reading Facebook because I'm stupid and do that. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we all do that. The dumbest thing you'll ever read, but there was a, a message on there from a friend of mine, and I won't use their name because it, it, I'm sure that it was it was blocked away to a certain group of us, um, that they had called the suicide hotline and had gotten an answering, kind of a, a robotic answering message and hung up and didn't know what to do. So, of course, all of us were calling this person, so their phone exploded. Um, but at the same time, if someone can pick up our record, listen to it and go, Hey, I get this. And even though I perform under the name Lewis Cipher, I mean, I, I, I'm very open that my real name is Michael and, and my last name's Lee and you can find me on Facebook. It's easy. Um, I don't, I, I will never stop someone from sending me a message on Facebook and saying, Hey, I'm thinking about hurting myself. Um, because it, this isn't just something that we recorded. This is something that both of us sincerely believe in. So, um, and that's you know, what makes been... that 
that's what makes that album so heartfelt and so I don't want to say in your face, but it is. It's in your face because not only do y'all believe in it, but you have your own personal stories as well. And to have come through the end of that tunnel into the light, you can resonate with others and say, look, I've been in that place. There is a 24-hour tomorrow. There is always hope. I think that it was really weird for us just kind of transitioning forward and not meaning to cut off the discussion about suicide because, I, I mean, I can talk on that all day long. Um, moving on to the next record, it was kind of like coming out of this yeah. darkness that I was stuck in because the first show we ever did, the very first show we ever did was at a place called APK. I can see Jay groaning already. <laughs> um, we had been in the same room during the recording of Overthought once. So we were only ever in the same space once, and that was when we recorded, um, what the hell is the name of that song, Jay? The one you sang on that album. Uh, the Loathing Rope. The Loathing Rope. Um, That's one of my favorites. But it was, um, when we did that album, we had never been in the same room, and I called Jay and I said, hey, I'm promoting this this charity show to sub- for an animal rescue we should play live. I'm going to put live fans on it. We're going to play live. And Jay's like, um, shouldn't we rehearse or something? And I'm like, fuck it. Let's just do it. (laughs) And, uh, and it was really weird because at the time I'm, I'm obsessed with cover songs. It drives Jay nuts. Sometimes I love taking songs that aren't industrial or aren't electronic and making them sound that way. And, uh, there were two that I wanted to do. And, and one was terrible and we'll never see the light of day. And that was, I wanted to do a cover of the Dixie chicks. Goodbye Earl. Um, <laughs> it didn't work. It did. Trust me. It didn't work. It was horrid, but I love that song. It's one of my favorite songs ever. So I wanted to do a cover of it. It didn't work. We scrapped it. And the only song we were able to play that night because our computer system literally shit the bed, like just completely crapped out. Um, was a song by a band called The Tragically Hip. Um, and the song was called The Hundredth Meridian. It's a great, great little number. Um, but, and, and I'm kind of digressing here, um, but two days ago, Gord Downey, who was the lead singer of The Tragically Hip, died from cancer. And the day he died, I was, uh, I had had surgery uh, on my mouth a couple of days ago. I had to have some teeth yanked. And, uh, Gord Downey passed away, and of course I was sitting at home alone, uh, the girlfriend was at work, and I was thinking about it, and they kept introducing him as a Canadian poet and all this, and I'm going, wow, you know, to think that music can make an entire nation stop dead in their tracks and say that you passed away, that's a pretty powerful communicating tool. Absolutely. And then to think about what we did with overthought at the same time, because of course I thought about, I even said to Jay, Hey, we should revisit that, that tragically hip cover, but it's a terrible idea because it was a horrible cover. Um, but you know, we talked about a different song, which we may do someday. Um, but that particular song, um, and, and to, to, to bring yourself, might me back to that. Um, put me in kind of a dark place because one of the first things we thought after that show was maybe this won't work. And it's because of yourself and people like you and all your listeners. Um, I think one of the moments that we realized we needed to go and write subversion was you had put out, uh, we had been on your show, we had promoted overthought. And then you told me one day, just out of nowhere, you said, wow, you guys are one of the highest number of listeners have listened to the show. You guys did. Uh-huh. And I'm thinking people people actually gave a shit. Oh yeah. well, maybe we should do an maybe we yeah. should do another record. And you still uh, are. You still so, are. After all this time. To to tie that into your show, I mean, to to all the people listening wherever you are, if you if you listen to that first show, we're, we're sorry. Um, <laughs> it was a wonderful show. Well, it was a great show. You were on it, um, but more oh, importantly. Lord. More importantly, you inspired us to make the second record. So well, I am that, was a, that was a big, big part of it, because when you do what we do, and, and um, 
you'll hear us joke around and make the comment that thing we do because that's mm-hmm. what people used to call it. They didn't call it a band. They didn't call it music. They used to say, well, we, we can't use your band. We can't use that thing you do. And we but were that, like, which thing we do? But that thing <laughs> you, know? you do is what makes you guys unique, and it makes you stand out ahead of the herd and not part of the herd. Well, we, we like to think so. Um, we do things exactly the wrong way most of the time. And somehow, through some stroke of genius, and maybe it's just knowing the right people, maybe it's the fact that people have never seen anything like what we do, um, it goes over well. And we were told, uh, you know, you brought up the, the Eastern Canadian Tour, and we were told, you're an industrial band. Never play the eastern part of Canada. You'll lose money. Okay, the first year we did. Last year we went on tour of the East again. We broke even. And I've already started looking into next year, and we've decided, hey, we're going to tour a different part of the country, but let's do a festival in the East. And we're getting offered ridiculous amounts of money to play a festival. And I'm going, huh? (laughs) What just happened? (laughs) Where did this come from? Um, because it's called heard good it all... karma, Michael. It's good karma because y'all are I... good people. I always thought my karma ran over my dogma. <laughs> but... <laughs> I'm horrible. I'm sorry, guys. I'm stuck in a hotel room pacing back and forth. It. So I didn't... But, 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 We're actually but, in different cities right now. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I was kind of worried about, about Michael because he said that you were going to be in a different city and it was going – cost him his firstborn and part of his leg to call in. And I'm thinking, how can I get this kid to call in? Because I need Michael on the phone, too. So thank well, you, Michael. That was Jay, actually. That was Jay. And I, oh, it was um, Jay. Oh, yeah, it was Jay. Yeah. The brain fart What there. happened is I, I'm sitting here, and, and, of course, we're old. And everybody thinks, oh, they're an electronic band. They must be young kids. No, we're old fucks. Um, <laughs> and pardon my language again. If, if you have children in the room, I'm really sorry for the next two hours of their lives. Um, they're going to hear some shit they've never heard before, um, or maybe they have because my kids. Are Daddy, what were the what were the, what were the what did the words the nice man said mean? Yeah. <laughs> some parents, right, well, you know, I just have this visual of some kid under a blanket listening to the show, and his mom comes in there and goes, "What the fuck are you listening to?" You know. Cipher. Well, but the <laughs> yeah. The, the the listening audience by now should know that that's why we call it off the chain because anything ha- could happen and most times pop- probably does. So <laughs> I do have to I do have to correct you on something, though, Yvonne, and, and I feel bad because I've let it go this long. What's that? Um, you br- you brought up that we created Hall of Mirrors as much as we would love love to be able to do that to say that we did not write that song. You did not. Um, that's no, actually a cover version. That's a cover of an old Kraftwerk song. And we were driving down the road, and Jay had put it on a tour disc for that very first Eastern Canadian tour. And when I heard it, I looked at Jay. I said, we're doing this song. And uh, we played it live a couple of times. And and the first time we ever played it live was in Toronto at Nocturne. And uh, a guy named Ryan Clark was there. And if you've never had a chance to have Ryan Clark on your show, that's something you should probably correct. Absolutely. Um, he's phenomenal. He's phenomenal. He's a wonderful DJ and a record label owner. And um, But Ryan uh, heard that song, and he he, uh, he signed our band the next day to his record label because Hope Mansion had fired us because the owner's a dick. Uh, Why in the world would Hope Mansion do that to y'all? Well, because Jay owns the label, and we, we outgrew the label. <laughs> <laughs> it's our little joke to ourselves that oh, okay, got, gotcha. you know, Hope Mansion Recordings got rid of Cipher. It's like, yeah, no, we we outgrew the label. We because we both like I helped Jay with the label a little bit, and uh, we couldn't keep up with just the Cipher project. Never mind anybody else on the label. So the other people on the label are suffering because I'm keeping Jay so damn busy with Cipher. Not um, true. That that we moved on and we signed with electric bat record and uh, Ryan signed us on the contingency that we record hall of mirrors. And uh, we put the money out to buy the rights to the song. And uh, I think uh, as a song, I don't think they write them much better than that one. It's it's a magnificent 
song. I love it, and it's too bad y'all didn't write it because it sounds just like something you would write. That sounds That's like the two of y'all. <laughs> That's why we love it so much. Well, the funny thing is, it's also not not your typical like if you it's not your typical craftwork song. It wasn't one of their hits, so to speak. So right, um, it's on the album Trans Europe Express, and I, I, I tend to listen to albums as a whole. So, you know, I sort of I had I knew about it, but I I kind of had it out of my mind. I was listening to the whole album through, and I heard it, and I'm like. Oh, Mike's got to hear this one. This is cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, well, well it sounds like it. Cypher's. It sounds like something Cypher would write. It it very much is, and it's really neat because um, this new record um, was a big change for us. We went from um, you know heavy mental health messages and and uh, anti anti-technology messages and, and just kind of fringe stuff to dive headfirst into Main Street politics and, and fire both guns blazing at some people that we don't like so much. Well, and, speaking uh, of that, let's play Empire of Hate. Excellent. I love Hold this on. song. And then we'll talk about it. It's the next single, so you'll be the first one to play it.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that was Empire Hate by my guest tonight, the, the Canadian band Cypher. Now, I know that this third album went a little bit political, and all of the political <laughs> BS has been a going around for, <laughs> for a while. To me, and I could be wrong, but to me, the song represents the divisiveness and the let's see how much we can destroy instead of building up. Is that pretty much on tap? Kind of. Kind of. Um, and, and I'm sure that Jay and I each have different perspectives on this song as we do on every song we write, which I think is so fucking cool. Um, <laughs> but to me, one of the things, like, I, I really strongly hate two things in the world, seafood and fascists. Um, the two of them together, you get me a fascist with a, a piece of seafood and I'm going to puke. Um, but <laughs> one of the things that I, I really, I really, really bothers me right now is that people have taken the word fascism and they've turned it into the word nationalism. And you have all these people that are, are preaching hate and what they're, to me, what they're really preaching, what they're really preaching is fear. True. And you can't take you can't take such a great word as hate. And I mean, I was guilty when I was younger of thinking, oh, that's a bad word, and teaching my kids don't use the word hate. And I'm thinking to myself, the only reason hate's a bad word is because, and, and this is where the lyric, you know, this is a song of, oh, about an emotion the fascist stole from the people. Hate is a it's a necessary emotion. It's part of the human spectrum of emotions, and it's become synonymous with racism and I don't think that's right. So to me, that song's literally saying, okay, you want to hate things. I've been hating things a lot longer than you have. Um, and, and if you want to be directly in that crosshair, that's no problem with me. I'll happily put you there and we can go. And it doesn't bother me because there are, and, and this, that particular song, interestingly enough, is actually the next single off the record. You're the first person to play it live. I love that. Really? Um, on the air. Yeah. Wow. <clears throat> That's gonna, you're the first one to play that on the air. Um, most people want to play Punch and Nazi. You played Empire of Hate. I love it. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, it's um, – we also played Punch and Nazi first on your show, interestingly enough. <laughs> um but that song, to me, is literally throwing down a gauntlet and saying, okay, I'm going to lay it all out on this record. I'm going to lay everything I got on this record, and, you know, you can respond however you want. And people have. Um, they've responded negatively. They've responded positively. But people are at least talking. And, so if that song gets people talking, so be it. we did it right. Exactly, it because right. without a dialogue – you have nothingness. We have to have that di- And we may not agree when we have an open dialogue, but at least we're having a dialogue. I think that um, the other day I posted something online that said, I'm, you know, I'm not always a good person. I'm not always a bad person, but the measuring stick isn't what you can put in your little Facebook or Twitter posts. It's what I see in the mirror at the end of the day. There you I go. have to be the best me I can be. And, and uh you know, exactly. And if people don't want to talk about those things, then, and if your, your answer to everything is you're a racist. Oh, you're a member of Antifa. You're this, you're that. Once you start putting labels on people, you create that era where we start telling our children, don't use that word. It's a bad word. It's just and a freaking word. And, and guys, would it also be right to say that when we start putting labels on people, that we strip that person of the essence of who they are. Exactly. I think so. I, I think that's fair. I think that... So I'm curious, Jay, what does that song mean to you, man? Empire of Hate? Yeah, other than just a really cool song we had fun writing. <laughs> <laughs> I think we wrote that one in one day. I think um, we wrote it in an hour. <laughs> yeah. Um... I think it certainly speaks to divisiveness. I think it. I think. I. I think there's a, a bit of a warning there. Um, when I when I hear Empire of Hate, you cannot sedate. It's kind of like 
it's kind of like saying, if we do nothing, you're not going to be able to stop this. Um, so I have that take on it as well. I mean, I also, I, I agree with Mike's, I certainly agree with Mike's take on it, but I can also see where it does speak to that de- divisiveness is going on in U.S. politics right now. And, and, and we implode from within. Oh, it's, it's well, really that's just it, because, yeah, and when you, when you start talking about labeling people, it you, I mean, if you take a if you t- if if you take a sports ball team, they have a name, right? That uh-huh. means more to people watching it than anybody than any of the individual players, uh-huh. right? When you label that, you know, when you start using labels like alt right, antifa, all that kind of stuff, what you're literally doing is set, is setting up the teams, yep, to play a game. And you know, you know, Empire of Hate to me is warning of that game that's being played. Where, you know, wow, you know, people say that I'm the one that makes deep political shit. Jay, that was fucking awesome, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna use that. Well, Holy since, shit! I gotta write a song about that. Since we're on this, yeah. let's just go ahead and play the the last song that I have for us, which. I could not agree with more because they are. And, ladies and gentlemen, this is called Media Whore, also by these wonderful guys. I'm telling you, these guys tell a story in every song if you just listen. With an, and it's like reading a book. you got to listen with an open mind. So hold on. I'm going to play it. It's long been understood uh, that unless people are controlled, uh, they're going to challenge power. media are extraordinarily subordinated to external power. That's what power means. It's long been understood uh, that unless people are controlled, uh, they're going to challenge power. The media are extraordinarily subordinated to external power. That's what power means. been understood uh, that unless people are controlled, uh, they are going to challenge power. Long been understood. 
power. That's what power means. Challenge power, 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 challenge power. The first time I heard that song, I said, I have to play that on the show because it is so true. It's probably, I'm going to go out on a limb, and uh, one of the neat things about this record for me is the fact that I listen to it as a fan. I don't listen to it as the artist that recorded it. I listen to it as a fan. I love this record. Um, that's my favorite song on the entire album. Um, I, it's also my least favorite because I, I, I don't like performing it live sometimes because it hurts. Um, <laughs> because... I have this kind of this bent over stance that I do and it hurts the hell out of my back. Uh-huh. Um, but one of the things that about that song that I love so much is there's this dark growl in it. And when we first recorded, everybody said, how'd you do that with your voice? And I looked at him and went, I didn't, that was Jay. And <laughs> um, I remember the first, I remember the first time I played that for my girlfriend, she was just like, wow, why doesn't he do that more often? And I'm like, I don't know, <laughs> but he's going to. Um, and that's the burning question, Jay. Why don't you do that more often? He does. I've heard some of the new stuff he's recording. It's awesome. Just oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. Neither can wait. I. I'm excited by it. <laughs> so I'm working I, on a solo project at the moment. So I, let oh. you know. I, think, it, I think that it's... Uh, I think for I, I I think it was it, it was just a natural development because when we originally started Overthought it was based essentially me putting the original intention was for me to get Mike's poetry and set it to music and it it kind of spun into the concepts that we talked about earlier and we kind of went hey this is happening. Um, so with Subversion, it was a little bit more collaborative, but this is, you know, this is uh, Real Politic is I think is is the first album where it's pretty much fifty fifty. Oh, absolutely, it is. Uh-huh. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, um, because Mike basically lived in my studio for a while while we were recording it. You know. Okay. <laughs> you no, know, we got to be fair here, Jay, and I got to be fair about this because, and I got to clear up a misconception, and we're going to do it right here on a Bond show, and it's going to be cool. There is this misconception that I am Cypher and Jay is the guy that plays the background music. Um, this isn't 50-50. This is 2080 with the 80 going to Jay. I mean, he creates all the music. He lays out the canvas that, that, that I can paint on. Um, and without him, I'd just be a guy yelling. Um, so really bluntly put, Cypher's as much. Jay, it, 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 it's... The project itself is 50-50, but the recording of this particular album, um, I would literally lay on his couch in his studio playing Clash Royale on my phone, and he'd just be jerking around with some sort of music, and I'd go, stop that, right there, whatever you just did, do it again. <laughs> and uh, Well, the thing is, too, is that is that Mike hears the sounds clearly in his head. So, you know, if – and he's getting the, you know – he's teaching me the promotional side of things. I've been teaching him more of the recording, the technical elements of that too. So, but if he gets, you know, if one of us gets stuck on something, it's kind of like, okay, well, this is what I'm looking for. So you kind of step into a producer's role in in a sense and go, okay, I, you know, because music is full of ambiguous uh, abstract words. Um, so you kind of have to go, okay, (laughs) you kind of, but Michael very clearly say, well, this is kind of what I want to sound like. And, you know, I'll translate that. But I mean, on real politic, Mike was, uh, sitting down in front of the computer as much as I, as much as I was playing with sound. And it's funny because in the one single punch of Nazi, there's a sound that we, neither of us know how it happened. (laughs) It and I happened. can't recreate it for the life of me. Well, <laughs> but the, that was tried. more Mike's design. The, the um, thing with the two of you is 
that you complement each other. You both bring out the best in each other and yourselves when you work together, and it comes across in your craft. It's really weird because we both have solo projects, and they're very, very different. Um, Jay's currently working on a new one. He's got like 10 old ones, which are all amazing. And if you haven't bought them, listeners, shame on you. Go buy his stuff. Um, Sorry, shameless plug. Uh, No, absolutely. Um, Not a shameless plug. (laughs) Whereas I actually have a solo project that I'm working on right now um, where literally it is just me yelling. Um, It's more of a spoken word project. And we've taken these different directions in a solo way. But what happens is I no longer have that restraint on me. Uh And Jade would never tell me, hey, you can't say that, man. There have been a few times, Jay Scott, are you sure you want to say that? (laughs) (laughs) But he'd never tell me I can't. Well, because he Um, understands that the creative part of you is that. In in. you cannot censor creativity. But he, um, what's really neat with it is there, when I sent him the first take of the, the, the solo record I'm working on, um, we were listening to it in my car, and he was pointing out things in it, not, oh, you shouldn't say that, but he was very, very subtly pointing out things in it that I could have done a little better. And... It wasn't criticism, and we don't take criticism. If something sucks, we tell each other, no, don't do that. It sucks. <laughs> um, see Dixie Chicks cover. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it, it's one of the things that w- without Jay, it would just be this angry rambling. Um, but between Jay and Ryan, they've managed to not rein me in, but, but focus it and, and laser focus it. So I'm excited about that. But when I listen to Jay's solo stuff, from 10 years ago or even two years ago, I hear one sound and now I listen to it and man, it's, it, what was the word I used? Um, it was just the most haunting thing I'd ever heard. Ooh. And I said to him, I said, I want to hear more of that. Give me more of that. What, and it was on chairs when I played in the car the other day. Yes. Oh, okay. And it wasn't That's just the new one, the new, new stuff. Yeah. That nobody else has heard, and I and you should all be jealous. Ha ha. But. Okay, <laughs> this this is what we got to do, guys. When I bring you guys back on the show, and of course you're coming back, of send course. me your solo, both of you. Send me your solo stuff, as well as some group stuff, and we'll do an hour and a half show, and cool. and let people in on the best kept secret in the whole wide world that no long, not only do y'all collaborate together but you collaborate solo and you're both very successful and, at it. We, we, well, he is. I'm still trying. Um but no, going back to to the song and and we'll definitely do that. Going back to the song Media Horror because I think for me it's probably the most important song on the record to talk about. Uh-huh. Um and where it comes from is it comes from a term that a certain guy that I don't like a whole lot anymore, who I used to love. But, you know, when people show their true colors, sometimes it it can get scary. Um, But the term fake news, and I hear it all the time, that's fake news, you're fake news, this is fake news, that's fake news. There's a wonderful quote in it um, that we used as a sample, which is the the media is incredibly subordinated to outside power. That's what power means. If you go back to to 1930s, 1940s, there was another guy that controlled the media. Uh It didn't end so well for him. But it it didn't end so well for a lot of people, but it didn't end so well for him either. But that concept, the concept of saying, this is fake news, that's fake news, and then getting people to believe it. And all you need to do to believe it is look at idiot books sometime and read the crap that's on there. And, and read not just what the alt-right are saying, but what the extreme left are saying, uh-huh. what the people down the middle are saying. Read it all. And, 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 and when you're done reading it, have a stiff drink because you'll probably need one. Uh, or smoke up. something green, <laughs> you know, mm. whatever you can do. <laughs> but 
it's it's weird. You post a, a picture, like I saw I saw a thing the other day, and uh, you might have seen it, Yvonne, when I posted it. Uh, whether you agreed with it or not, I don't know. But but there was a picture of Colin Kaepernick taking a knee, mm-hmm. and it was talking about the Supreme Court and a Supreme Court ruling that said that you cannot force someone to show patriotism. And I had posted this because I thought it was very important that people understood that this Supreme Court ruling does exist. And I was immediately assaulted with that Supreme Court rulings about kids in school. No, and then someone not. made... Well... See, it's, someone it's made the aud- can't force somebody to be patriotic. Right. Someone made the audacious mistake of saying, well, go read the ruling. Telling me to go read something political is like telling a kid to go have a candy bar. Exactly. Because <laughs> you're going to go right to it's like it. Saying, it's like giving Jay a cupcake, okay? I mean, it's just going <laughs> horrible. Yeah, it's okay. I had to get one fat joke in. Um, <laughs> but... So I went and read the ruling, and there's, there's a wonderful passage in the ruling that says no entity, big or small, shall force someone to be patriotic, religious, or any other, any other form of mass worship. And it, because the media has reported this so skewed that it's become horrid. I mean, the, the, the NFL players taking a knee for the national anthem – is the best example of the song Media Horror that's out there because that movement, nobody even remembers why he originally did it. All they remember now is Donald Trump said, fire the football players. Well, Kaepernick, I I saw an interview with uh, Kaepernick where he basically said he talked to uh, a war vet Mm -hmm. and – you know, the the war vet had said, I went in there, you know, basically saying these guys are totally disrespecting everything. And they had a conversation about it. And he said, because this was when he was sitting down. He right. was just not getting up off the bench. And the vet explained to him that taking a knee in the, in the army is more of a respectful way. They do it for fall, the fallen comrades. They do, you know... You know, you take a knee for prayer and that kind of stuff. He said, but if you take a knee, nobody, you know, it should not be viewed as disrespectful because we do it. And, you know, the rhetoric again, you know, you're disrespecting the vets and stuff like that. And so many, so many U.S. Army vets have come out and said, I agree with these people. We fought for their right to do this. You know, but when you look at it from a media horror, like the, the perspective of the song media horror, mm-hmm. they've taken a message that was, whether you agree with it or not, the message was we live in a country that refuses to fight for a certain group of people. I refuse to stand for that until they will. And now it's about Donald Trump said, fire football players. So that's an example. That's what, what I'm talking about in the song media horror is that, that taken, twist. It's, it's what they did is they took one statement that was made by the president and have blown it up so bad that they now control the narrative. Is that what exactly. I'm understanding you to say? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Now, They're hijacking the narrative, right? Now, guys, sadly, we only have an hour show. So when do y'all want to come back? <laughs> Whenever you want us back. Anytime. Okay. It's like coming home, Yvonne. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's what a it's one of our favorite places to come to. So. Oh, honey, y'all just make a girl blush. <laughs> we try. <laughs> we try. So we're very trying. Was, That's what our they, girlfriends do. But but, but but I love them. I love these two guys with all of my heart. I've loved them since the first time I ever interviewed them. Tomorrow night at eight o'clock Eastern Central Time, um, author. P.J. LaRue, and then Saturday night at 8 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time, my friend and fellow author Julie Morgan will be here. And within the context of of what we've been saying tonight, I'm not going to give all three of my little things that I always say. I am going to only say the difference between who you are and who you want to be is what you do. And and guys, you know that I am always so honored (laughs) And, and so humbled when y'all come on this show and you, you say, Yvonne, we've got a new release. We want you to 
to launch it on your show. It, this is what this show is about. It's about all of y'all. It's your show. It's not my show. And I am so grateful. Well, you got it. What you got to do for us, Yvonne, though, sometime before May, you got to get us off the chain t shirts, though. <laughs> We're going on. Off the chain t shirts. Hey, we need gonna... off the chain. We need off the chain t shirts. We're going on a, on that internationally syndicated TV show. We're going to be playing a whole tour with it, and we want to wear off the chain t shirts on stage for that one, so everybody sees your show. Are you, honey? I'll make that happen. You should. I know where to. I know, where to I know. You tell me your size. Send me all the information. I can make that happen. Jay, you know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I'll, uh, I'm serious, I'll connect like, on Facebook. I can make it happen. Awesome. And and these guys will come. And yes, they are going to be doing an international television show. I am so proud of these guys. Just, Thank you. Y'all hey. just, you have no idea how proud I am of you. And and I. Oh, see, you're going to make me cry. <laughs> but this is y'all. This is what you do, and you do it so marvelous. And we need y'all. To keep us honest. Well, what you all need is to put me out of work by. I, there's a wonderful line in one of our songs that I believe in a world where there's no need for us anymore. So let's hope we can reach that because once we don't have to write this and we can write a pop record, we'll be very happy. Yeah, but then you'll find something else to write because you're not gonna. You're not just gonna disappear. I'm not gonna allow it to happen. I'll. I'll poke. I'll poke the bear, as they say. Hey, that's a song. Poke the bear. <laughs> <laughs> Send in the wasps. It'll all go on the same nature based album. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, go and get Cypher's new album. They can find, be found everywhere on Apple Music, iTunes, YouTube, uh, Spotify, Amazon Music, Google Play, you name it. They're there. Pull up the band Cypher. Friend these guys on Facebook, Michael Lee, Jason Norwood, Cypher. Friend their, friend their page. And go and get their music. And until tomorrow night... At 8 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time, we say good evening. I guess. So now we're, Thanks for we're, having not, us, Ron. we're not live now, but uh, you know you know what I'm going to do, guys. I'm going to put this up on the page after it, it goes up into archives. Cool. I'm going to tag y'all in it. And mm-hmm. then cool. tomorrow I'm going to put it up on SoundCloud, Mixcloud, Spreaker, we well, always do. Not... You put it everywhere, and then after we're yep. on, we get 150, 250 yeah. people come and talk to us. It's great. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Podcast, podcast Garden and Podcast.com. It's also up on YouTube, iTunes, FM.com, and TuneIn Radio. It's cool. on everywhere. We it's it. everywhere, we, yeah. It's... it's such an honor to come on your show. You always say you're humbled, and, and we're humbled because you keep having us back. It's always a blast. <laughs> and, and we always it's run out of this time, time. though. It does. It's so it weird is. this time not being in the same room with Jay because usually we're in the same room laughing at each other, and, <laughs> and it was just weird doing it from a distance. Yeah. Well, I am tickled that you, and I figured out how y'all did it. You, you did a conference call with each other, and then Jay tuned in to me, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I called you. Basically, I called you, or I called the, the station and then called Jay and conferenced him in. Yeah. It's, yeah, whichever way, whichever one of you couldn't get in because yeah. you, yeah. And which, because yeah, I was, I was going. How in the hell am I going to get both of these guys on here? Because it's so important that y'all are a unit, and we have so much fun together. I've never, ever, ever seen him as distraught as he was this morning when I said to him, "I, I can't get home from work because I was going to. I'm, I'm two hours away from home, and I've got a ton of work to do tomorrow." And I said, "I can't get home tonight, so you're going to have to get on the show." And he says. But I can't because I can't afford the call. If it's a minute, uh, no. <laughs> I, said to him, I, said, uh, I said, no, no, that's okay. That's okay. Don't worry about it. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. And then about 20 minutes before we called in, I found a button on my phone that said I'd call. And I went, what does this do? <laughs> <laughs> so that's how we figured it out. But, I mean, it's. We did a show last night. Now that we're not on the air, I can say it. We did a show last night. I could tell it was a very awkward kind of show for Jay because it's a show about medical marijuana, mm. um, which, of course, is, is what I do um, to stay healthy. And um, it was kind of an awkward show to do. It, wasn't, it didn't have that natural flow like this one does. 
And I was so glad that we got to do this show tonight because, I mean, you're out, even when we play live, we don't get the chance. And one of the things I love is that we get to talk a little bit about individual songs. We don't ever get to do that. True. Now, I should have put money down on which songs you would have picked because I had two out of three right. Um, <laughs> you I had know two out of so three well. right. Well, I knew you were going to pick Hall of Mirrors because it's right up your alley. That's true. Um, and uh, I figured I figured media horror because, again, it's something that has a distinct message. The one I actually thought um, was internal state of war. That was my third one. That was a toss um, up. I, w- I thought about that one. And I thought, no, I want to save that one because I want to be able to talk about that one in depth, really in depth. So we're going to save that one for the next time. That one's a neat one. And uh, you, you'll really enjoy that because that song is actually the only song, well, okay, other than the song on the album about a baseball umpire, um, that's the only song on the record that's not about American politics, but everybody thinks it is. It's actually about South Korea or North Korea yeah. um, and what goes on with children there. Yep. Mm-hmm. So that's where, I mean, it just, it was so weird. And, uh, you know, I love the fact that, that someone or yourself and your listeners and, We've had a lot of people. We played a show in, in the nation's capital here in Ottawa. And after the show, we spent what? Like, we couldn't even get to the merch table for like two hours. Wow. Because people were coming up to us going, what did you mean when you said, what did you mean by this song? And we were like, holy crap, you listened to what we were saying. <laughs> um, and so it was cool. It was a lot of fun. And, and, you know, the one thing that we enjoy more than anything, we're on break soon. <laughs> we. We love our we love our little bit of time off, so we're taking some time off later on this year. But no, next time, uh, let us know when you have have some time available. We'll definitely come on the show. We're always willing to do that. Yeah. And, and I still want to do I still want to do some music live on the show, so we got to figure out how to do that. Okay, y'all figure it out and just let me know, and we'll do a whole yeah. show with live music. That'd be cool. And then y'all get to pick the songs, and and then I'll get to to give my take like we normally do. I give my take on it, and then y'all give y'all's yeah, take we on do it. That. Because yeah, be this cool. is what this is what makes y'all's show unique. When when you come on this show, is you do you get to discuss the songs, and somebody else may have a completely different take, but at least then they're, now they're more open minded to listen to it. I wish we could get, and I know you have a call in, the ability for call in. Yes. Um, but we all talk so much, we don't get people calling in, right? <laughs> I want to get people. I want to try to get people to call in and discuss it because I'd like to hear what someone who, you know, maybe isn't like. There's this misconception going around right now that I'm this huge left wing nut job, and I, I'm the, one of the most conservative people you'll meet. Yes, you are. I just. I just have a very specific dislike. Um, but I'd like to hear the take that people from those the, the different sides of this argument have. You know, that'd be cool. All right. To hear I what will, some guy The next that time we don't y'all know, come so. on, the next time we set up the show, we'll do an hour and a half show, and we'll, we'll put yeah. as part of the marketing that we want the listeners to call in. And you guys right push on. that that narrative too. Look, we're doing this special show because we're going to play some music, and we want to get your take on what you think it means to you. That'd be cool because I mean, there's some, you know, there's some people that have come at us pretty hard on Twitter and in other places, and I'd like to hear those people. I'd like them to call in and have a chance to voice their objection to our music or to to voice their support. Because I think it's just as important for the guys that get offended when I yell punch a Nazi to say, hey, this is why you shouldn't say that. And then I can oh. say, yeah, but you didn't listen to the friggin' song, did you? <laughs> you know? You, you just want to punch That's a Nazi. That's not what it's about. <laughs> That's not what I, the song's about. No, I know it Thanks. isn't. And, and they don't. But, again, it's when people, they hear the tagline, but they don't listen to the entire song, and they listen with a closed mind. It's like reading a book with a closed mind or looking at a piece well, of art with a closed mind. It was, it was super intentional because <clears throat> if you listen to the, 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 the do-do-do-do, it's the same notes, the same sound and everything. They play at every Major League Baseball game. Right. And 
we did that intentionally because that gets stuck in your head because you've heard it every day of your life since you were, you know, <laughs> six years old. <laughs> and it's like, oh, now we've taken this wonderful memory of your childhood and made it about punching Nazis. Have a good time. You know? <laughs> You're so well, I have to sign off for here because so uh, it's uh, going to be about bedtime for the boys. Yeah, I gotta and I've, gotta, I gotta, I've got to get this thing up in archives so I can send it to y'all. And once cool. again, guys, thank you so much. Thanks for no having problem. us, Yvonne. Well, thank until you. next time. Yes. And I will get <laughs> I will get y'all some dates, and y'all let me know if they're good for you. We'll All figure right. it out. All right, All right darling. Good night, right, guys. Bye. Take care. All righty. Good night.